I agree. There should have been an amen there. Because that is exactly what we're here for today. A firm foundation. A rock in a time of troubles and struggles. A surety that where we are is in the eye of God. A place where we can rest and feel secure and not have to fear all that the world brings to us. Will you stop? pause with me now and start with prayer Lord we thank you for this opportunity to come together we thank you for this chance to worship you as a community but also Lord as individuals who come before you knowing that you are our God our Savior that you are that rock that we can come to that we can cling to in times of struggle we thank you, Lord, that you are that God and that rock in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. David said in the Psalms, This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so we should. Because even though we live in days of struggle and trial, God is still upon his throne. God still has a will and desire in our lives if we but listen. And God will work in our lives regardless of the circumstances that we face. And what a wonderful assurance that that is because this world right now is crazy. This world is in a situation where we don't know what's next. So as we live in that kind of a time, how wonderful it is to know that I can trust God. I can rest in his faith and his assurance and his love. Will you join me in the call to worship? Over wind and waves, Christ comes to us. Do not fear to meet Christ here. We have heard the invitation. Our hopes have brought us together. The storms of life do not have the last word. Our faith keeps us from sinking. Our doubts lead to greater faith. Our losses open us up to greater possibilities. Let us call on God's name and give thanks. Let the hearts of all who seek God rejoice. We will sing God's wonderful works. We will share with others God's marvelous deeds. And so we should, because God is a marvelous God. He has blessed us in ways too many to number. He has allowed us to be called his children but to become children of God it requires of us first to deny ourselves to admit that we are not worthy that we are not capable of coming into God's presence on our own will or skill or of all the works that we do God will not accept us on our own accord he accepts us when we come to him saying father Please forgive me, for I have sinned. And Lord, please forgive me and restore me to your own justice. That attitude will bring about a right attitude within us. And it's with that attitude that we are going to pray the prayer of confession. Because we are in need of salvation. We are in need of forgiveness. But we are also very much aware of our inability to do it on our own. Will you join the prayer confession? God, we confess that we are dreamers more intent on our own importance than on your vision for us. We like our favored position on this earth and we are jealous of those who have even more than we. We want to walk on water before we have learned to stand upright on land. We want to rise above others rather than reaching our helping hands, that all might be uplifted by you. We pray for pardon, for greater insight, for another chance to live and serve in faithfulness. Amen. My friends, we do have the assurance from the Bible that tells us if we do but call on God, confess our sins, he is faithful and just and he will forgive. But we must take that first step. 
we must first believe. We must first come to that point where we accept that God is God. Which kind of brings us into our message today. Has the Bible become obsolete? Now just a few weeks ago I told you that the Bible seemed to be very, very much an offensive book to many. Because the truths it speaks offend many. And because it offends so many people, there are many out there today who will tell you the Bible is now obsolete. Or if it's not completely obsolete, most of it is not. What that is coming out of is a trend that I see today invading the churches more and more. You've heard it called New Age. You've heard it probably called Progressive Church. And at first glance, those don't seem to be very dangerous words but they come with some pretty dangerous ideas one of which is that the Bible as a whole is obsolete it is no longer the Word of God but before we get into the seriousness of the Bible I did want to have a couple read you a few things that kids have written about the Bible and how they explain it the kids say that Noah's wife was called Joan of Ark I didn't know that the Egyptians were all drowned in desert. Afterwards, Moses went up on Mount Sinai and got the Ten Amendments. I think a lot of people might agree with that one. They'd rather have com amendments than commandments. And talking about a commandment, the first commandment was when Eve told Adam to eat the apple. The fifth commandment is to humor thy father and mother. Not to honor, but to humor. And I think a few of the kids need to know that, too. The greatest miracle in the Bible was when Joshua told his son to stand still, and he obeyed. Uh, I think that would be a bigger miracle than when the sun actually did stand still in the sky. Because I don't have too many kids that that's just almost an impossible task. The epistles were the wives of the apostles. Solomon, one of David's sons, had 300 wives and 700 porcupines. Moses died ever before he reached Canada, and then Joshua led the Hebrews into the battle of Jericho. One of the opossums was St. Matthew, who was also a taxi man. Now, those kids have got, it, have got it, but they don't quite got it. And to be honest with you, the Bible can be confusing. But the truth of it is, as much as there's confusing things in the Bible, it's really not hard to understand. It's God reaching to man, trying to get his attention to turn him back to man to himself. Too often we lose the simplicity of that message and get lost in theological arguments. We oftentimes find ourselves overwhelmed. And I love Mark Twain's statement that it's not the parts of the Bible he doesn't understand that worries him, it's the part he does understand. And I suggest that perhaps most of us fall into that category. There are still plenty of parts of the Bible I don't understand. But I'm striving to understand it more, and the more I understand, the better I see it as what it is, the Word of God. Isaiah 40, verses 6 through 8 says, A voice says, Cry! And I said, What shall I cry? It says, All flesh is grass, and its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Now today, you find a lot of folks arguing over what is true, what is fact, and in fact we have fact checkers on the internet checking fact checkers who then are checked by more fact checkers and ironically none of them seem to agree on what the facts are. The Bible calls itself the Word of God and by that very definition says that it is without error. But you can find a lot of people including in the church today that will tell you that that is not completely true. That the Bible is but an inspired book of God. Inspired meaning, well, parts of it are okay, but the parts I disagree with are not. And frankly, 
we have to pick and choose the parts of the Bible we listen to because, let's face it, some of them are uncomfortable. And we don't like being uncomfortable. I talked about the New Age and the Progressive Church. And there's some real distinct signs that you're listening to someone from a progressive or New Age philosophy. And the very first thing, even though they will use things like the inspired Word of God to describe the Bible, they will quickly tell you that it is not infallible. They will quickly tell you that it was man's ability or trying to understand God. And that that was their understanding at that time. And our understanding is much better now. So the Bible may be obsolete in many ways. When you hear those kind of words, let me warn you right now. You are hearing falsehoods. You are fearing lies. We do not have a fallible Bible. I find it fun that the Bible, which has been around for thousands of years, opposed by many, and many a powerful leader, still stands without question, without error, to this day as the Word of God. That doesn't mean there are people who argue with it. There are certainly plenty of those. But the people who will argue will only argue that in their opinion and in the way they feel, that Bible isn't accurate. They can actually offer no physical evidence to that opinion. And that's another movement of the progressive Christianity, is that feelings matter a lot more than fact. If I feel like the Bible is uncomfortable, it is uncomfortable. I should then reject it because my feelings trump what the Bible has to say. And that's a dangerous place to be. Because as the psalmist says in Psalm 19, 7 through 10, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul, and the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rule of the Lord's are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, and much more fine gold, sweeter than honey, and the drippings of the honeycomb. Now I'm here to tell you, in this day and age, it's a scary thing what I hear and see talked about in the Bible. I have had discussions with ordained ministers who have studied long periods of time in seminary, who will tell you that the Bible is no longer relevant, that it is in fact obsolete. It is not the inspired Word of God. Oh, there are bits and pieces of Word of God in there, but the rest of it was just man trying to understand God, or it's just man's opinion on what they thought God meant. I really am surprised at how easily some of these folks who have been biblically trained reject the Bible. In fact, in one conversation I was having with an ordained minister, he was proceeding to tell me about the Gospels of Mary and the Gospel of Thomas. Now, those are nothing new. You'll hear them spoken of quite frequently. In fact, today you'll hear them a lot more than you ever did. And his suggestion was that they were really missed books, lost out of the Bible, and they should have been there. Well, I'm here to tell you, and it's probably a scripture or a sermon in it somewhere, but I don't know how many of you could hang on through it, explaining why the books of the Bible are the ones they are, and the ones that didn't make it, why they didn't. But the truth of it is, when you see people discounting the Bible, it's because they decided that other Gospels tickle their ears a little better than that. While they were claiming the Gospel of Thomas shed great truth of life, and the people who canonized the New Testament rejected the Gospel of Thomas because of its inaccuracies and its spiritual lack of congruity with what the scriptures said about what Jesus said and the original disciples. It disagreed with those original disciples and what Jesus had said. So it didn't make the deal. And when we were having a discussion about Jesus Christ being the only way to heaven, he referred to the Gospel of John as the opinion of John. 
because John has some very uncomfortable truths. So he wished to discount the opinion of John, or the Gospel of John, but he wanted to talk more about the Gospel of Thomas, or maybe the Gospel of Mary, or Judas, or about 15 other Gospels that are out there. My friends, you will find no shortage of people touting a new Gospel, a new way to look at the Bible, and to be honest with you, be very afraid when you hear those things. Because if you're going against the Bible, you're going against God. Many of these lost Gospels were never lost. In fact, if you do the history, you'll find out why they were rejected quite easily. We have got a Bible that has been checked and double-checked for accuracy for theological correctness and if anything is in error it doesn't make the grade the fact that these apocryphal books and that's a fancy word for saying extra books didn't make it it's because they didn't measure up to what would be considered the Word of God they didn't have what it took to be considered God's Word we all have opinions and we all have our own attitude of what's right and wrong. And that's okay, except when we start to believe that our opinion supersedes everyone else's. Too often, in this new age way of thinking, our progressive church, we've gotten to a point where we're willing to accept different opinions over scriptural fact. The Bible warns us about that. 2 Timothy 3, 13-17 says, While evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing whom you have learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All Scripture is breathed out of God, and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for the training in righteousness, that man of God, that man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The Bible is made up of 66 books, written, inspired by 40 different authors. And I'm here to tell you that any other endeavor that man would choose to do over that many thousands of years would most certainly come up with many errors and discrepancies. There would be obvious flaws in the way they do it and the way it works out. Many argue that the translations that have been translated over centuries have lost their accuracy, that we've somehow lost the true Bible and become subject to a Bible that we've revised of our own making. That argument held up quite well until something called the Dead Sea Scrolls was found, a book, parchment that was written several thousand years BC, and when compared to the modern scripture, had a 99% accuracy. The 1% difference was over one word or another word, none of which changed the actual meaning of the verses or the scripture. We cannot find that in any other book. We cannot find any other compilation of books that has so much factual backing as the Bible. Now to be honest with you, the New Age or the Progressive Church today wants to take the Bible out of the picture. Because, let's face it, we don't like everything we read. Some of it makes us uncomfortable. In fact, some of it makes us downright ugly. When I am confronted by my own sin, I do not enjoy that. And yet, as Second Timothy said, it is a book designed to do just that. To show me where I'm wrong. Today, most people, if they quote the Bible, all use it for lip service. They pick and choose the verses that they feel most comfortable with, that agree with their theology, and they openly reject the rest of the Bible as obsolete or no longer accurate. 
it's honestly a case where too many people in the church today will tell you that bible was simply a man trying to understand god with the ability that he had three thousand years ago and now that we're more enlightened we understand it better than they did even if they wrote it now that's dangerous thinking when i think i know more than the author does when i'm reading a book the truth of the matter is it's all about convenience it's about what you want to believe and what you want to have to deal with the bible causes us uncomfortable truths it reminds me of a school teacher of a middle school where as most cases in middle school the girls were starting to learn how to do makeup and it turns out that the girls were in the bathroom applying lipstick and then to test the lipstick they were putting lip marks all over the mirrors and this was getting to be a problem and so the principal decided that she would bring the janitor in and explain to these young ladies how difficult it was to clean that lipstick off of those mirrors and the janitor could see that the girls were not impressed with the speech and so she said well, I'm going to show you just how hard it is to work and how much he has to go to doing it and the janitor being a wise man took his squeegee went over to one of the toilets dipped his squeegee in the toilet and then began to scrape the mirror ironically there was no more lipstick on those mirrors somehow you don't want to kiss the same water that came out of the toilet I think there are a lot of folks today that needs that kind of janitor telling them the truth to show them not just with words but to tell them that the rewriting of the Bible to fit our comfort level is a wrong idea we cannot take the bits and pieces we don't like and ignore them and only take the sites that we do we don't get to pick and choose Jesus said simply in John 14 6 says I am the way the truth and the light no one comes to the Father except through me Jesus Christ will not allow you to call him a great teacher or a prophet he will not allow that even though many of the denomination many of uh, uh, you, excuse me many of folks in many other different religions will call him just that a great teacher and a prophet Jesus Christ will have none of that he says I am the Son of God in fact he actually said I am the I am quoting the father back in the Old Testament we cannot pick and choose Jesus Christ is either the Son of God or as C.S. Lewis and then later Josh McDowell said he doesn't give you the option to make him a great teacher he is either a liar a lunatic or the Lord Jesus Christ you don't get to pick a fourth option because if he is not the Lord Jesus Christ then he must either be a liar or a lunatic we don't get to pick and choose the comfortable words that Jesus said and take out the uncomfortable we are not given that ability as Christians likewise in Proverbs 30 verse 5 it says every word of God proves true he is a shield to those who make refuge in him do not add to his words lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar God asserts his authority in the Bible he is, in fact, God. You can question it. You can deny it. But understand that the Bible is going to be very clear when you do that, that you are rejecting him. We cannot pick and choose the parts we like and the parts we don't. John 8, verses 31 and 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free the Bible is rejected so many times this day and it shouldn't be a surprise because Jesus Christ himself was rejected by the religious leaders of his time Jesus spoke uncomfortable truths 
that were written in the Bible. And today, our relative attitude, my truth and your truth, don't necessarily have to agree. Except it doesn't work. I've used this illustration before, but the truth of it is, if you believe in gravity and I don't, when I walk off the cliff, I'm going to find out the reality that gravity does in fact re exist. I can deny it, but the reality is there. It's the same with scripture. Today, you'll hear many a church preaching that all roads lead to God. That everywhere, every religion will eventually find God because they're trying. And you know, the truth of it is, that's a comforting idea. I would love that sooner or later we all go to heaven because it's just a wonderful place to be. But the Bible doesn't say that. In fact, the Bible is very clear. There is only one way to heaven, and that's Jesus Christ. And if that offends you, I'm sorry, but it is the truth. The Bible has been attacked over the years and will always be attacked. Hitler, Stalin, Mao, and many others have tried to ban and burn that book. Yet it remains. Why? Because this is what God said about his Bible. Mark 13, 31, heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away. The Bible is not going anywhere. It may not be as readily available as it is today. In fact, there's a survey out that says that the average American home has 4.4 Bibles. That's a lot of Bibles for every home. Maybe it's time to pull one of those 4.4 Bibles off the shelf blow the dust off and read it. We as Christians have had a wealth of knowledge at our resources ready for us to study and to learn from and they sit idly on a shelf. We find our way, excuses for not studying the Bible and I will tell you if you have many of the old versions of Bible that are hard to understand because the King James English change. There are a lot of excellent Bibles. You hear me, and I've been quoting from the English Standard Version, because it does speak in plain English like you and I understand. We do not have the opportunity as Christians to ignore what the Bible has to say. We should not and we cannot take and allow ourselves to be fooled into the fact of thinking that the Bible is no longer relevant in our society. The Bible is not obsolete. It is the true and living word of the God calling out today and asking, will you listen to me today? My friends, let's face it, too many of us will say no, thank you. Because it inconveniences me, it differs from what I wanna hear I have other things crowding into my face and my time. I don't have time to, for the Word of God. Those are the kind of attitudes that Satan loves. Those are the kind of attitudes that the progressive New Age Church loves to tout. And they're the kind of attitudes that will take many straight to hell. That's a scary thought. I've said it before. I say it again because it bears being repeated. Many a person sitting in church on Sunday morning will find themselves in eternity in hell because they trusted on something other than Jesus Christ. They believed a doctrine other than what the Bible taught. They learned from things that were comfortable rather than things that led them to Christ, to repentance, to the realization of their need to be forgiven. One of the biggest lies of the progressive church is that God doesn't need to forgive us because we're basically good people. Well, I'm here to tell you that the Bible tells us very specifically that we are in fact not good people. And I don't think you have to read too many newspapers today or watch too many news programs 
for that fact to be very much drummed into you that we are not good people. We are evil at our heart. Without God, we are totally baseless. We are totally lost. We are in need of that Bible and the love of Jesus Christ more than ever now. Don't believe the lies of the new age, new progressive church as they spread things throughout here that tell you otherwise. In fact, like I said, dust off one of those 4.4 Bibles and start reading it. You will not regret it. You will be amazed. I will here tell you, the first time I read the Bible cover to cover, I saw scriptures I had never heard of before. You will be shocked at some of the things that are in your Bible that you've never heard from a pulpit, that you've never heard anyone else preach, and all of a sudden you're going to go, wait a minute, how is it that I've been a Christian for so long and didn't know these things? Well, my friend, very simply, we listen to the lie that the Bible is obsolete. It is not. In fact, if anything, it is more relevant today than it ever was. With that attitude, would you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll now have our next hymn.